This character is called an undead huntsman, as in being a huntsman in this forest was his trade, and then he turned undead. The truth is, the literal Japanese translation of his name is undead hunter, as in someone who hunted the undead. From this, you can see that just one little word can make a world of difference, just like in my last video where I accidentally said that Sudoku was a word for a samurai committing honourable suicide. Anyway, this undead hunter name was originally in Japanese, and then a translator took hold of it and turned it into something that would work well in the English language. This doesn't have to be a literal translation, and in fact, most literal translations would sound like absolute crap, and a good example of a beautiful translation is the Japanese that became the gutter. Originally, this was at the bottom of the rubbish, but you agree, this literal translation sounds terrible, so the translator changed it to the gutter, which combines bottom and rubbish into one word, a brilliant, succinct translation. This is a game where written text means a lot, and the slightest mistake can and has affected our interpretation of the law, and you're gonna see some more examples of that. Because this is just one example, a lot of the story has been lost in translation, and it's time for us to find it again. I really like the title I chose for this one. Anyway, let's start with the Pursuer. In English, very little is known about him, and his item descriptions make very little sense. In Japanese, however, you'll be surprised. So, in red, I've highlighted the discrepancies between the descriptions. I'm going to read the literal Japanese text, since that's what we are going to consider as canon. And I'm sure you'll agree with that, because Japanese is the first language it was written in. A ring of power, modelled after the weapon of Adgars, known as the Mad Warrior of Arkan, increases the equipper's physical attack power. Two countries, Arkan and Vane, once existed in these lands. Though they shared the same origins, they despised each other greatly. I found that there's two major things that can happen when you translate something. You can discover something completely new, or you can prove something wrong, something that the translator added when they actually translated it from Japanese. In this case, we make two big discoveries. Firstly, the name Adgars is omitted completely from the English translation, but it exists in the Japanese translation. So some guy called Adgars is the Mad Warrior of Alken. Now, Adgars can't be the pursuer himself, because there's actually multiple pursuers. And where before, the Mad Warrior could have been any character in Dark Souls, because he didn't have a name. Now we know that Adgars is a character of his own. Secondly, it also says Alken and Ven are two countries, not kingdoms, but most importantly, it doesn't say a man founded both countries. It says that they both have the same origins. Now, this is completely different. This opens up the law for interpretation. For example, what if by origins it doesn't mean a man? What if it means that both countries have similar geographical origins? We know that Ven is the region that the Old Iron King took, and in my opinion, it's everything from the left side of the rotunda onwards. Huntsman's Copse, Harvest Valley, the Iron Keep, I think that's all Ven. And I also think Alcan could have been everything on the right side of the rotunda. Hade, No Man's Wharf, the Bastille. Now this is likely because the two countries despised each other greatly and would have split the path from Majula, which was probably once a city or little town. And since the literal translation says that they shared the same origins, Hey, who's to say they didn't mean they shared the same origins of Majula? But whether this is true or not, my point is that it should bother you that some rogue translator decided that the two countries were founded by the same man, even though the original translation says nothing about this. Until I found these translations, I was trying to make connections for a lore video where none existed before. I was trying to figure out who this man was, who could have founded both of these kingdoms, but it turns out it might not have been a man at all. Admittedly, this is only really a problem for me or other people who look at the law, but that stuff makes it to you eventually in the story, so it is important. If we look in the credits, we find that there were five English scriptwriters and three translation companies working on the translation of Dark Souls 2. And this helps explain something. When we go through the translations and the descriptions, we realize that there's a pattern. Some 
translations for certain characters in the game have terrible translations, whereas some translations are really good. And what people have noticed is that the game doesn't actually have very consistent translation. And unfortunately, the translation of the Pursuer contains some of the worst translations in the game. So whoever was responsible for this translation seems to have messed up. I mean, it's bound to happen, but it seems like some translators took more care than others, since all of the Pursuer's translations are pretty bad. The Pursuer's soul, or as it's known in Japanese, the Cursed One's soul, tells us that this Cursed One was ordered to hunt those who bear the mark and carries out his mission. The mark is the dark sign, and the dark sign brands the undead, so he's, he's chasing us. The Japanese text actually implies that the Cursed One could be simply one of a group, which we know to be true since we come across multiple pursuers in Drang Lake. However, you wouldn't know this from the English translation because the English translation implies that there's only one pursuer. I mean, you could figure it out because you see multiple pursuers, but the translation says there's only one. The Japanese text also calls him a Cursed One. And our translator says that the sort of curse implied here is the sort that enthralls or binds a person. And this is because certain Japanese words actually have more of a, a cultural meaning than we would understand, even just from looking at the word. So the type of curse that the pursuer has is one that enthralls or binds him. So you have to wonder who ordered the pursuer to do this or who cursed him. I'd say it was one of the past kings of Drangleic, possibly Vendrick or the Iron King. My reasoning behind this is that A. Every king has tried to find a way to cull the undead. Some tried to ship them off, some organized undead hunts, some created chariots that rode down the undead endlessly over and over. And also, two kings figured out ways to bring inanimate objects to life. Vendrick achieved this after he conquered the giants, he gained the ability to create golems. The pursuer seems to be some sort of empty suit of iron armor, which leads me to the next king, which is the Iron King, and he had the ability to infuse iron with souls. So what do you think? I personally just like thinking that the pursuer is a remnant of an older kingdom. They're just sort of programmed to fly around, looking for undead to kill, until a certain undead decides to strafe right, instead of left, and kills him. Alright guys, let's move on to the old Iron King. You'll be happy to know that I was working on a Prepare to Cry for the Old Iron King, and you'll probably be sad to know that I hit a few roadblocks, as you commonly do in Dark Souls. I found a few questions that I'm really hoping will be answered by the next piece of DLC, so I can actually finish the episode, and I found a few translations here that clarified a few more things for me. First up is the name the Old Iron King is given once he turns into a demon. Now the Japanese text says that the thing that became molten earth gained the body, while the English translation we see says that the Iron King's corpse became the vessel that bred Icarus Earth. The name Icarus Earth is capitalized as if it's truly the name of a being, but the Japanese text just says that he became molten Earth, you know, as a description of what he is, not a name. Bottom line, the Old Iron King's demon form doesn't have a name, it's still the Old Iron King, or his body at least, possessed by Gwyn's soul from Dark Souls 1, and turned to Molten Earth. Now, we all knew Gwyn's soul is a part of the Old Iron King, but now we know that it's actually what possessed him and allowed him to live in his Molten Earth form. When you kill the Old Iron King in New Game Plus, he drops the Old King's soul, which is called the Soul of the Ineffable. This is the soul of Gwyn, just like the other souls of the Ineffable are the souls of other lords from Dark Souls 1. The thing is though, in Japanese it's called the soul of one whose name is forbidden, and this lines up with another text in English. If you've watched my story mode video on the Iron King, you'll know that I was wondering about the description of the crown of the Iron King, which says that the king sunk below the magma and met the one whose name must never be repeated. And that had us all wondering, you know, whose name can't be repeated. Some of us thought it was Manus, some of us the serpents, and some of us thought it was Gwyn's soul. It just so happens that, conveniently, for the mystery of the lore, the Japanese text reveals that the one whose name is forbidden is the same as the one whose soul is of the ineffable, which means that the one who the old Iron King met below the magma is Gwyn. I really hope this is as interesting for you guys as it is for me, because speaking of other things we only know because of Japanese descriptions, let's talk about the Bewitched Alon Sword. 
Since this sword is actually belonging to Sir Alon, this name is completely wrong. It should be Alon's Bewitched Sword, as in the Bewitched Sword belongs to him. Also, the Bewitched part of the name is derived from the Japanese word Yuto, the pronunciation of which I'm probably fucking up in an incredible way, but the name actually has way more implications than the word bewitch does. In Japanese fiction, a yuto is a sword that has gained sentience and a life of its own, possibly from being used to kill so many times. Pretty badass. According to our translator, these swords often seek blood of their own accord, maybe even possessing the wielder. Kind of like what the Chaos Blade represented in Dark Souls 1, and the implications of this say that Alon is either possessed by a cursed sentient sword, or that he's powerful enough to control it. These are things that are definitely not touched on by the English word bewitched. So Alon is either incredibly powerful, or when we find him, perhaps he's completely controlled by some other demonic force. Moving on to the giants. The English translation says that the giant lord we find in the giant's memory once conquered Drang Lake. So if this is true, why are there no giants around now? They would have had to conquer Drang Lake and then said, oh, let's just leave it, it's fine. Because that would have meant they lose it again. Because all we ever see is giants fighting before we shut down the giant lord, who is also known as the giant king in Japanese. If we had read the Japanese text, it would have been a lot clearer. The Japanese text says that they sought out Vendrick's castle and laid waste to Drang Lake. They didn't conquer it. Also, there's this huge argument over what exactly Vendrick stole from the giants. Was it the Lord Vessel? The Throne of Want? The power to animate golems? We still don't know, and we've been thinking about this for a while. Hopefully the final DLC gives us answers, and I'm actually really scared that they're just going to leave these huge unanswered questions in the final DLC, because they kind of only have one more chance to tell us everything, unless there's more DLC planned, which I doubt. For now though, know that the English text says that the giants invaded to claim an invaluable prize, where the Japanese text says that their objective was solely what was in Drang Lake. This makes whatever they're seeking seem a lot more stationary. It makes me think of the Throne of Want, which can't exactly be stolen, you know? I mean, imagine lugging that thing across the seas. Alright, next up is the giant's kinship, which is something I've wondered over for ages. This is the item you get when you defeat the giant lord, right? The English description is on screen, but the Japanese description calls it the resonance with the giants, and reads, there is a throne fitting for every king, the view from the throne is known only to the one who sits upon it, or does the throne show he who sits upon it only what they want to see? Two things. Firstly, our rogue translator is at it again. The word kinship isn't in the original Japanese text. Now, kinship implies that we are suddenly of the giant's blood, as if we're some sort of brother with them. And while I understand how he got kinship from resonance, that's not exactly what resonance means. To resonate with something is to evoke images, memories, and emotions. This is something you might have received from fighting with the giants. You might learn from them and learn to resonate with them because you've been in their presence. In the English translation, it made it sound like it was something we got from the giants. You know, if you're of the kin with the giants, that means they're almost friends with you, which was always weird considering we killed the giant king. Once we've resonated with the giants, it triggers our fight with Nishandra, and possibly it triggers the movement of the golems. So are the giants in tune with the golems somehow, and do they react to someone who resonates with the giants? Do you understand how this is more significant than kinship? Maybe Nishandra only shows up now because she couldn't get that link with the giants because she couldn't get the Ashen Mist Heart from the ancient dragons. You know, these are theories that you could settle on, and we wouldn't even think about these unless we had these Japanese descriptions. Also, the English text regarding the throne makes it sound like some magical item that Grand Sal wishes, like a magic lamp. And while I kind of think this might still be true about the throne, because of how important everyone seems to think the throne is, the Japanese text personifies the throne a little bit less by asking the king if it shows him what he wants to see, not what he wants. It's the little things. Alright, moving on again, let's talk about... The Emerald Herald, aka the Pilgrim clad in green, 
according to the Japanese. This is really interesting. When you get to the Dragon's Eerie, she says that she has been waiting all along for someone who can overcome fate and free her. Where in the English version, she says that her own manifestation has led us here. In Japanese, she's actually a little bit more specific. She says that, you were led to this land by a bunshin of me. Once again, my pronunciation is probably completely shit, but a bunshin in Japanese fiction is essentially an extension of her being, which has a separate body. It's essentially the same person, but separate from her. So this means that the herald we see at the Dragon's Eyrie towards the end of our journey is the real one, and it suggests that all the others we meet, or some of the others we meet, are false. Is this why the Herald at the Eerie sounds different? Younger? I'd say so. We know that the model of the younger Herald is actually still in the game's files and in the game's credits, so they might just have decided not to implement her because maybe the voice didn't sound young enough or something. At any rate, it seems like the Dragon Eerie Herald is different, and I think that she's at the Eerie because that is where she was created. She tells us later that she was born of dragons, so that fits. She was born here at the Eerie, and somehow created shadows of herself that were sent to Majula, Drangleic Castle, the Throne of Want. That's why they appear at those impossible locations, because they're projections of herself created for different purposes, to lead us here, to the Dragon Eerie, to hear the dragon's words. Not that the ancient dragon's words make any sense in Japanese or English, he's speaking a complete different language of his own. His dialogue becomes, that which was stagnant has started to move, it moves again, for as long as to seek is to live, there is no escape. But that is why they seek the answer hidden in the mist. You're left wondering, who are the they he refers to? That's the main thing that's omitted from the English text. Is he talking about the player character? Is he saying that the player character seeks the answer hidden in the mist? Is he talking about Nashandra? human beings in general. Given the rest of the dialogue, I tend towards thinking that he's talking about humanity and the curse in general. Oh, so that's mostly it. Let's just have a quick fire round to talk about the little things. The Flexile Sentry becomes the Executor of Exile. He's not actually a guard, he's someone who's in charge of executing the action of putting undead into exile. This makes way more sense, especially considering other item descriptions. Our translator mentions that it could be a typo, since flexile and exile are kind of similar words. The ruined sentinels are actually empty guardians, because they're empty suits of armor. The lost sinner is actually the forgotten sinner, because her and her sin have been forgotten to time. The executioner's chariot is actually the executioner chariot, which also fits the law a bit more. The chariot is actually the thing doing the executing, because if you read the item description of the executioner chariot's soul, you realize that the guy riding the chariot isn't actually the source of the evil, the horse or the chariot is the source of that evil. That horse is the one influencing the guy. So the chariot being the executioner makes more sense. The royal rat authority, whatever that means, is the rat king's test because it allows you to speak with him. Alana, the squalid queen, is actually Alana of the filth. The word for filth, kigare, has a meaning in Japanese Shintoism, which doubles as referring to a stain on your reputation or your soul, as if she's filthy down to the very core of her being. Harvest Valley isn't actually a place used for harvesting. The word that turned into harvest meant to gather, as in the poison is pooling and gathering in the valley. The crown of the Ivory King is actually the crown of the White King. Ivory is just a fancy way of saying white, and it doesn't mean that the king is made of elephant tusks or something. Or maybe he was. I guess we'll find out in a couple of days. Segway. Once the DLC is out, I can make lore videos on the story that will make use of every piece of information in the game. Because when I make Prepare to Cry, I worry that a piece of information in future DLC will come out that will make my video obsolete. So. I kind of just want to wait. I want to get these right the first time I do them. A few people are confused about why I covered Sin, and that's because his story actually acts as a really good precursor for the evil of the queens, and also because the story of the Sunken Crown is almost completely separate from the rest of the game. 
But the rest of the game isn't like that. It's going to depend on the knowledge we get from that final DLC for it actually to make sense. It's harder to tell a story if you're saying, yeah, this is what happened. I think maybe it could be, it might be wrong. You know, I need to be somewhat certain about what I'm saying. And thank you guys for waiting for that. I mean, at the end of the day, this is all completely about making good videos for you guys. That's my end goal. And everything you've done allows me to do that. You guys have supported me so much, it's ridiculous. So thank you. This is the least I could do for you. And that's also why I do weekly videos. You know, it's a schedule I can stick to. And I feel like if I just released them all at once just to get views, I would get burnt out pretty quickly. I could release more videos if I just made Let's Plays, because those only take like 30 minutes to make. But that's not a good use of my viewers time you know why make a 30 minute video when i can save you 25 minutes and entertain you more in a good quality five minutes you know i don't want to waste your time your time is important to me so thank you for watching as usual and i will see you next time bye bye